It is now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. My question, uh, Speaker, to the Premier. Premier, I watched your press conference last night in wake of the latest revelations of $1.1 billion that you wasted to protect Liberal seats. Um, you, uh, you said, uh, I'm sorry, here's the difference between your leadership and mine. Premier, saying you're sorry isn't leadership. I actually Order. Order. I'll be starting immediately. Member from uh, Sudbury, come to order. I'm going to start right away. Finish, please. Your style of leadership, Premier, is you believe leadership is simply saying you're, stor you're sorry. I believe leadership is about holding people to account, holding people accountable for what they've done with taxpayer dollars. So you failed to make this announcement last night, maybe all this morning. Question? Who got fired? Who's being dumped from cabinet? Who's being held accountable for this incredible waste of $1.1 billion? Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have done exactly what I said I was going to do when I came into office, Mr. Speaker. I campaigned during the leadership on opening up the process, Mr. Speaker, making sure that the information was available, and that is what we've done, Mr. Speaker. That's why the tens of thousands of documents have gone to the committee, uh, 30,000 documents from the Premier's office, Mr. Speaker. That's why I asked the Auditor General to look at the Oakville situation and to report on that situation. We have that report now, Mr. Speaker. So the information that I said needed to be uh, needed to be available is available, Mr. Speaker. From my perspective, that's leadership. I said I was going to do it. I did it. You have the information, Mr. Speaker. That's been the process. You see it, please? You see it, please? Well, I, I think I think the answer, Premier, is if you will remove nobody from their job. It's time to remove you from your job. Let me see if I understand your alibi on this, Premier. Your alibi is that you spend a billion one in hush money to send to Trans Canada, and your alibi is that you had nothing to do with it. You were out in the hallway when these decisions took place. You were out of the loop. The reality is, Premier, your fingerprints are all over this. You actually signed the deal. You had a choice. You had an option. You could have said, no, this is not in the interest of taxpayers. This is bad for the province of Ontario. You could have set a higher standard, but you signed the deal. You signed the document. If you're going to do that and sell us up the river, why should we trust you for the finances? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, it is really important that people understand that we made a commitment, as did all the parties, to cancel and relocate the gas plants, Mr. Speaker. That was our commitment. And so as we followed through on that commitment, Mr. Speaker, we took advice from officials. And, Mr. Speaker, I have said that in the first instance— Shouting people down is not—I uh, need to hear the response. Thank you. Fair. I have said in the first instance that there were decisions made that should not have been made, that we should have paid closer attention to the community. I have never said, as the Leader of the Opposition alleges, I've never said that I didn't take any responsibility. In fact, I've said the exact opposite. I was part of a cabinet that made this decision, and we worked to make it to make the decision in the best way possible, Mr. Speaker. There were mistakes made. I have apologized, and I do apologize for those mistakes. Member from Halton, the, come to my order. responsibility now is to make sure yes, that sir. this never happens again, that we have the processes in place to make sure it never happens again. Thank you, Mr. The member from Bush Gray Owen Sound come to order. The member from Cambridge come to order. The member from Halton come to order. Second time. Supplementary final. 
You know, it's incredible the Liberals give themselves a standing ovation on the pat on the back. All of you could have said no. Not one of you actually stood up and said no. Not one of the Liberal benches ever took a moment to say this was wrong. Not a single one of you. Not a single one. You know what, Speaker? The choice is clear. The same goes both ways. The Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities come to order. And the member that just said that might find themselves kicked out. Please finish. Not a single one of you said no. And the only choice, Speaker, is to clear out this entire corrupt lot, change the government, and get this province back on track. Here's step number two. Question. Call the judicial inquiry. Put the Liberals before the stand, the threat of jail time, the threat of jail doors closing to compel the truth. Premier, will you support our Thank call you. for a judicial inquiry? Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, if I believe. Member from Prince Edward Hastings, come to order. If I believed for one moment, that there were anything criminal that had gone on, Mr. Speaker. If I saw any, if I had seen anything in the Auditor General's report that it would have indicated anything criminal, Mr. Speaker, I would order, I would order a judicial inquiry, Mr. Speaker. I would be looking for that. The fact is that it is very clear now, as a result of all of the documentation and all of the reports that have been done, Mr. Speaker, that there, there it, were mistakes made. That the people who were the people who were making decisions made mistakes in terms of uh, some of the some of the decisions, some of the uh, some of the uh, the paths that they went down, Mr. Speaker. I've said that. I've taken responsibility for that as a member of the cabinet, yes, Mr. Speaker. And what I had said I was going to do was provide that information to all of the people who were asking for it. That's what I've done, Mr. Speaker. We have the information, and now, Mr. Speaker, it's time we need to make sure it doesn't. Thank you. New question. You see it, please. You see it, please. New question, member, leader. Premier, Speaker, Premier. When a group of people choose to misuse taxpayer dollars, 1.1 billion dollars, and then you cover it up and destroy evidence. You know what they call that, Premier? They call it fraud. They call it perjury. That's criminal activity. There's no more, no more clear demonstration than that is why we need a judicial inquiry. Put Liberals, put Dalton McGuinty, put Kathleen Wynne on the stand. Let's actually hear you before a judge who can compel the truth. And maybe it's going to take the threat of jail doors slamming shut behind the Liberals to get that truth, but, Speaker, I'm not going to give up on that. I will do that as Premier. I'll get the truth for taxpayers, and we'll get some justice for what you've done to rip people off. You signed the deal. You had a choice. Question. You sold this down the river. Yeah. Premier, why did you sign the deal? Why didn't you say no? You see it, please? You see it, please? Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And you know, as I said when I came into this post, I said that we were going to open up this process yeah. and we were going to get all the information that we could, and we have done that, Mr. Speaker. And in fact, the Auditor General has credited our government. What she said is it was good to hear they're taking the report seriously and are taking some actions and changing the way things are, are going to be done in the future, Mr. Speaker. That's our responsibility. That is what governments should do in response to information that determines that there were. That that there were decisions made that shouldn't have been made and that there were processes in place that should not have been in place. We're taking that action, Mr. Speaker. The most important, there are two things that are very, very important in this. One is that we cite energy infrastructure differently, Mr. Speaker, and the Minister of Energy is putting new rules in place in terms of working with community. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, the rules around political staff relationship with third parties and their ability to influence those deals, Mr. Speaker. Those are the Thank changes you. that need to be made. Thank you. Supplementary. Again, Premier, no, nobody believes that you happen to be out in the hallway when these decisions were made. You were a co-chair of the Liberal campaign that chose to do this. You signed the key cabinet document that sold the province out 
and sold out taxpayers. These things have real-world consequences. $1.1 billion could have built that subway to Scarborough. $1.1 billion could have built a new hospital in South Niagara. $1.1 billion could have built a new hospital in Vaughan. And you flush it down the drain to save Liberal seats. Premier, the problem here is that you yourself signed the document, you sold the province down the river, and the NDP sold their soul to prop you up. Isn't it time for a change? Will you call the judiciary? Let's get the truth on behalf of taxpayers. Thank you. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I went to committee. I answered the questions about my involvement. I made it very clear that I take responsibility for having been part of a cabinet that Mr. Speaker was trying to get a deal. There is no doubt about that. And we were taking advice from officials. So John Kelly, who was counsel of the Ministry of the Attorney General, said, quote, in my experience over 40 years of litigating, if you can avoid litigation, you should. It's a process that is fraught with risk." Unquote. Mr. Speaker, we were, we were trying to make a deal. We were trying to avoid litigation. We were acting in good faith in an attempt to avoid future costs, Mr. Speaker. That is the information that is available. I made it clear to the committee what my involvement was, and I take responsibility for being part of a cabinet that made those decisions. Yeah. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, we all agreed in this House that those gas plants should Answer. be relocated, Mr. Speaker. That was the agreement. We implemented that, Mr. Speaker, and I've said there were mistakes, and I've taken responsibility for that, Mr. Speaker. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Final supplementary. Here's the, uh, the reality. There are, there are two important facts from the Auditor General's report. Uh, number one, uh, Premier, with all due respect, you weren't of the loop. You were in the control room. You were calling the shots. And the key decision we find out on page 16 of the auditor's report itself, it said the key deliberate decision was made when you signed the document and you sold the province down the river. You signed away any of the protections the taxpayers had to give hush money to TransCanada Corporation to save Liberal seats. Premier. You signed that document. You had an option. You chose to sign that document. You sold the province down the river. I have no confidence in a premier that makes those decisions, that has a pattern of behavior, that puts the Liberal Party ahead of the taxpayers. Will you do the right thing today? Will you call our confidence motion and let this legislature decide if you have the ability to lead our province? Thank you. <coughs> Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. You know, when I, when I look at this whole situation, the thing that I think is the most problematic is that in the first instance, we did not get the siting of these pieces of energy infrastructure right in the first place. We did not listen to the communities. We did not uh, do the, the, the right thing in terms of taking into account the concerns of the community Member from in Leeds, the first Grenville, instance. Come to order. Had we done that, Mr. Speaker, had we had a process in place as we do now, where we would take into account the concerns of the community, we would, we would examine those and make sure we understood what those concerns were, Mr. Speaker, and have community buy-in in the first instance, then we would not be in that, this situation. That is the problem, Mr. Speaker. We are correcting that problem. It should not have happened, and I take Answer. responsibility for having been part of a government that made that mistake of not taking the community's concerns into account in the first instance. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My first question is for the Premier. Yesterday, aud the Auditor General found that the cancelled power deals will cost the people of Ontario almost a billion dollars. Uh, does the Premier plan to challenge the findings of the Auditor, Speaker? Mr. Speaker, we have uh, we've accepted the auditor's uh, findings. We thank her for her findings. I will say, Mr. Speaker, that the uh, the OPA has a different set of uh, findings, used a, a different set of assumptions, and. One of the points of this whole exercise, Mr. Speaker, is that estimates of cost vary. When you look out 20 years and you're trying to estimate what the costs are going to be, it is difficult 
witness the number of different numbers that have uh, arisen over the past months. Even to today, Mr. Speaker, where there are two different numbers in terms of the OPA number and the Auditor General's number using different assumptions, so the costs, the cost estimates vary, and that has been one of the issues that has been very challenging, Answer. I would suggest mostly for the people of Ontario, in order that they try to understand this situation. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, it sounds to me like the Premier is saying she doesn't believe the numbers that the Auditor General put in the report yesterday. Now, the Auditor found very clearly, Speaker, that the Liberal government, in their rush to reach a deal, drove up the costs in their rush to reach a deal, drove up the cost of cancellation by hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, as a member of Cabinet, the Premier signed off on that decision. How does she justify that sign-off? Mr. Speaker, let me just say I did not say that I didn't accept the auditor's uh, numbers. I said I did accept the auditor's numbers, but what I said was what she actually said, which is that there is uncertainty. There is uncertainty in these numbers. The Auditor General says that herself, Mr. Speaker, and anyone who has spent time with accountants, and I love accountants. The, children, the father of my children is an accountant, but the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that numbers change depending on the assumptions. And that's what the Auditor General says. So there has been confusion about the numbers. That is why I asked the Auditor General to look at this situation. I accept her findings, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, I have done everything in my power to get information out to answer the questions that have been asked, and will continue to do that. Thank you. Final, uh, Speaker, as co-chair of the Liberal Party campaign and as a cabinet minister who signed off on the decision, the Premier knew or should have known that the Liberal government was driving up costs and that the public would be on the hook. When the Premier was signing off on those decisions, was she thinking as an elected representative of the people or in her role as Liberal campaign co-chair? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I have many times taken responsibility for my role as a member of Cabinet in the process that uh, took place. We were, it's true, we were attempting to get a deal and avoid litigation, Mr. Speaker, and I will just quote from, uh, from David Lindsay, who is a former Deputy Minister of Energy. If you have a contract and you don't honour the contract, then the party on the other side can sue you for breach of contract and the damages will be all the benefits they were hoping to procure. Try, try, avoid, try to avoid li litigation. That was the strategy, what we in the OPA were trying to do." Unquote. So, Mr. Speaker, there was an attempt to avoid litigation. That is absolutely true. I take responsibility for being part of a cabinet that was attempting to avoid litigation and all the costs into the future that that would mean. So I take Answer. responsibility for that. And Mr. Speaker, I have said that we need to have different processes in place, and that's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question. There is a third party. Well, my next question is uh, for the Premier as well, Speaker, and I have to say that no matter how hard she tries to muddy the waters about the real numbers, the auditor was pretty clear yesterday. The government cut a great deal for TransCanada and made it easier for the Liberals to hold on to power, but they stuck it to the people of Ontario. Now, the Premier was one of four cabinet ministers who signed off on the arbitration preventing the OPA from defending the public interest. Wow. Why did she do that? Wow. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And again, I've answered questions about my role in uh, in being part of a cabinet that was attempting to get a deal on this, Mr. Speaker. We were working to get certainty, and we were, Mr. Speaker, attempting to avoid litigation. That is quite clear. We have said that over and over again, Mr. Speaker, because we believed, and certainly the staff in the Premier's office believed, that to uh, incur litigation or to, to go into a situation where litigation would be certain or, or probable was not responsible, Mr. Speaker. I've also said that we need to make changes. We need to introduce new rules that would limit political staff involvement in commercial third-party transactions. I've said that clearly. I said it yesterday, Mr. Speaker. We'll be bringing in policy in the next uh, week or so, Mr. Speaker, that will put Answer. those new rules in place. It's very important that we learn from the findings of the Auditor General. That's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. 
Well, Speaker, the Premier likes to talk about how much things have changed or how much she might want to change things in the future, but she was part of a team that signed off on this crass decision in a desperate bid to hold on to power. So if the Premier thinks this was wrong, why didn't she stand up and say so when she had the chance, Speaker? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So I just want to I just want to step back and just remind everyone that the that the uh, Specifically, the member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound, others as well, but the member from Bruce Gray Owen Sound will come to order. Second time. Premier. Sensitive budget. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. That what we were doing was we were implementing a decision that had been a promise of all three parties, Mr. Speaker, that we were, we were determined that we were going to relocate the gas plant because that was that was the right thing to do, Mr. Speaker. Member from Hamilton, Stony Creek, come to order. In the first place, had we listened to the community, had we examined the community's concerns, then we would not have been in that Brock, situation. But we Brock. all agreed that the, Brock, the gas plants needed to be relocated. We were implementing that, Mr. Speaker, and there was a cost associated yes, with that. And there would have been a cost associated with it, whether the PCs or whether the NDP had been in office, Mr. Speaker. That's just Thank the reality. Final supplementary. Well, our Speaker, I'll remind the Premier that I was the only leader during the election campaign who said I would not promise to cancel those plans until I knew how much we were spending on the people of this province, because that was the responsible position to take during the election campaign, Speaker, and I'm the only one that took it. Now, the people on, in Ontario are now on the hook for over a billion dollars, Speaker, and that much money could hire 18,000 nurses in Ontario. This is uh, actually on all levels here, all members, relax, and don't use this as an opportunity to steal some comments. Please finish. He could hire 18,000 nurses, Speaker. It could buy the Minister for Rural Affairs come to order. Instead, it's going into the pockets of private power companies. Now, the Premier says she's sorry today, but when she had the chance, the power to actually do something, she chose the Liberal Party's interests over the people's interests, and she signed off. Question. How does she explain that decision? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So let me just first say that I have said repeatedly that the, the money that was, uh, uh, the cost of moving these plants Mr. Speaker, it was unacceptable. You're yeah. absolutely, she's absolutely right that it was uh, it was not acceptable, and it came about because of decisions that were made that should have been made differently, Mr. Speaker, and a process that did not work. But, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the third party and her candidates they opposed both plants, Mr. Speaker. They said they would relocate them. They opposed those plants. That is the reality, Mr. Speaker, and we have them on record saying that they would. So, what we need to do is make sure that we understand that when decisions are made around large pieces of infrastructure, whether it's roads, Mr. Speaker, or whether it's energy infrastructure, when those contracts are entered into, Mr. Speaker, when Answer. changes are made in those, there's a cost attached to it. We better make sure we've got better processes in place. That's what we're doing, Mr. Speaker, on the siting of infrastructure and in the processes to get out of them. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the member from the Carlton. Thanks very much. Um, my question is, is for the Premier. Yesterday, yesterday, the auditor confirmed what Vic Fidelli had told this uh, Liberal government all along, yes. that their attempt to steal a seat in the last election cost $1 billion. Now, let's put this into perspective, Speaker. Barack Obama spent less money campaigning to become the President of the United States than you spent to save the member from Oakville's seat. It's absolutely shameful. And what bothers Ontarians the most is that the Liberal campaign chair who signed that cabinet document either didn't know what she was signing with the billion dollar price tag or she knowingly stood in this assembly and said it was only 33 million dollars so speaker my question is very simple is she incompetent or did she knowingly tell this house it was 33 million dollars when she knew it was a billion and that's why we need a judicial inquiry will she call it Seated, please. 
Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I know the Minister of Energy is going to want to speak to the supplementary, but I just want to be clear once again, Mr. Speaker, that at every juncture, when I reported on a number, I was taking that number from information that had been given to me by officials, Mr. Speaker. That is the only way that I had access to numbers. Those are the numbers that I used, Mr. Speaker, and I have said repeatedly that the numbers have changed over time, and that's been one of the process, that's been one of the issues around this whole situation, Mr. Speaker. It's why, in fact, I asked the Auditor General to look at the situation in the first place. Thank you, supplementary. Speaker, I guess the numbers certainly did change. She said 33 million, it was a billion dollars. That's 2,640 per cent that she was off, Speaker. It proves she's got no plan, she's got no mandate, and she has no credibility left whatsoever. She knew all along what the true cost of those cancelled gas plants were. The auditor said it as much in her in her documentation yesterday. She said at the time this premier was standing up saying it only cost $33 million, that she had actually already paid $330 million of that cost. She already paid a third, Speaker of what it had cost. That's how much she knew when she knew it. Has she no shame? She created the OPA to remove decision-making from the political sphere from energy decisions. Yet now she comes with her crocodile tears and says she's going to Question. prevent political interference. She's already done it. So, Speaker, the question is, how can you Please. Minister of the Environment will come to order. Premier. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I want to take the opportunity to congratulate my new energy critic. It's the first opportunity I've had in the House. She was one of three energy critics that were appointed at the time, Mr. Speaker, and consequently, I asked the Premier uh, if she could appoint two co-ministers of energy to match the three critics, but she turned me down. Mr. Speaker, the member from Northumberland, uh, please come to order a second Mr. time. Speaker, we're talking about the the costs that are going into the pool of costs that affect the rates, Mr. Speaker. Yes, these additional costs will impact and put upwards pressure on the rates. On the other hand, Mr. Speaker, in the last five or six months, we have taken some decisions that are going to be very significant in pushing the energy rates down. For example, Mr. Speaker, Answer. it was the $3.7 billion we saved on the Samsung deal. That $3.7 billion is going to push rates down Thank you. in the next 20 years, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Your question? The member from Toronto, Danforth. Thank you, Speaker. My question to the Premier. Ontario's Auditor General said, quote, we believe that the settlement with TCE will not only keep TCE whole, but may make it better than whole. Oh, right. The Liberal government made sure that TransCanada would get every nickel of profit and then some. In spite of the fact there was no reason to do that. When the Liberal government cancelled the Oakville gas plant to save a seat in Oakville, TransCanada ended up making more money, not less. And everyday Ontarians are paying those bills. Why did the Premier and her government put private power profits ahead of everyday families? Mr. Speaker, the plant in Oakville was poorly cited, and the government has accepted responsibility for that and has accepted the responsibilities for the additional costs. Indeed, the Premier has apologized for that. But, Mr. Speaker, in response to the people of Oakville, the PCs, the NDP and the Liberals committed to relocating the plant, and no party had precise costs at that time. The Auditor General, in response to the Premier, has now provided us with her estimate of the cost to do this. And, Mr. Speaker, these involve difficult negotiations. There are expert people who came before a committee, Mr. Speaker, and have said we ought not to be litigating this issue. It should be negotiated. And the contract that resulted was as a result of the give yes, and sir. take of negotiations to avoid litigation, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, it's a shame the minister wasn't around when two parties in this legislature told them before they signed the contract not to go ahead and open. Might have saved some money. 
The Ontario Auditor General said the reason that Ontario families are paying TransCanada more money for cancelling the Oakville power plant is because the government promised to keep TransCanada whole. The promise to protect every nickel of profit came out of the Liberal Premier's office. Why did the Liberal government put private power profits ahead of families who are paying the bills? Mr. Speaker, the Ontario Power Authority was negotiating with TransCanada Energy. The negotiations were tough, Mr. Speaker, and estimates were made, estimates were made by OPA, and I want to quote from the Auditor General's report, Mr. Speaker. This is the Auditor General speaking. Making assumptions about future events and their effects involves considerable uncertainty. That's, those are the Auditor General's words. Accordingly, readers should be cautioned that while our estimates differ from estimates previously announced by the OPA, they will also likely differ from the actual costs and savings that will be known in the future. Those are the Auditor General's words exactly. on page 3 of the report. Exactly. OPA made their best estimates on their assumptions. The Auditor made hers. And the result is in the Auditor's report, which we accept, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Question, the member from Ottawa, Orleans. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. For parents in Orleans and across Ontario, <clears throat> The health of their children comes first. But as we lead increasingly busy lives, it becomes more and more difficult to make sure we're making the healthiest choice, choices for our kids. This spring, our government's Healthy Kids panel made a number of recommendations to fight childhood ob obesity. I understand that the minister made an announcement this morning in response to some of this advice. Speaker, through you, could the minister tell the House about the government's plan to help parents make healthier choices for their kids? Minister of Health, thank you, care. Speaker, and thank you to the member from Ottawa Orleans for this question. We know that the healthier our kids are, Speaker, the less likely they are to develop a chronic disease later in life. That's why our government struck the Healthy Kids panel to give our kids the healthiest possible start. That panel provided very valuable advice, and this morning I was happy to announce that we're taking the next step in uh, moving forward on that advice. So we will help parents and children make healthier choices by giving the information they need, Speaker, by putting calories on menus and menu boards. This month we'll begin consultations. We'll listen to parents, health professionals and industry partners. And this winter, I will be introducing legislation that would require large chain restaurants to include calories on their menus. Answer. I know the member from uh, Nickel Belt has already indicated their support for this. I urge all members in this House to support this legislation. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you to the Minister. I know that parents across Ontario will be thrilled to hear that we are moving forward with menu labeling for large chain restaurants. This will certainly equip parents with more information to make better choices. But I think we all recognize that no one action will be enough to tackle the challenge of childhood obesity. Could the minister tell the House about other measures the government is taking to give our kids the best start in life? Thank you, Minister. Well, thank you, Speaker. And last week, the Minister of Children and Youth Services and I announced the first initiatives responding to the panel's recommendations. We need to give our kids a healthy start in life, and that starts when they're babies. So we're fo focusing on the first days, weeks, and months of a child's life by enhancing breastfeeding supports in Ontario so that every mom in Ontario who wants to breastfeed will get the support she needs to do so successfully. This includes 24-7 telehealth support because we know that babies are hungry around the clock. And as kids grow up, Speaker, we know that good food at school means keeps them healthier and boosts their academic success. That's why we've also announced an expansion of the student nutrition program to provide bre breakfast and snack programs for about 30,000 more kids in high-priority schools. Speaker, because of these initiatives aligned with the panel's recommendations to give Thank our kids the As I've indicated before, I don't like it when members do drive-by heckling. New question, the member from Nipissing. Thank you. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, my question is for the Premier. The Auditor General told us the cost to cancel the Oakville gas plant is significantly more than it needed to be, and that a number of questionable decisions caused this. 
The auditor states, quote, the province, the OPA and TCE entered into an arbitration agreement that laid out the framework. framework. That's what sent the price soaring. This is all thanks to you, Premier. You signed the Cabinet document that gave them the power to do this. The auditor further states this deal, quote, waived the clause in the contract that gave the OPA a defensible claim of not owing TCE lost profits. So, Premier, when you signed that cabinet minute, you wrote a blank check to TransCanada. Premier, will you finally admit that you are directly responsible Question. for this scandal? Thank you. Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the Premier has addressed those questions. The committee has looked into it. The Auditor General uh, outlined a possibility of what might have happened, but at the same time, we had dozens of witnesses in front of committee who spoke about the potential for litigation, that it was much better to negotiate than to litigate. But the fact of the matter is, Mr. Speaker, that at the Premier's behest, we have put forward cost estimates provided by the Auditor General, and the Progressive Conservative Party, which aggressively made the same promises, will not furnish us with their cost estimates, Mr. Speaker. We have asked for their candidates to come forward before the committee and talk about the costing that went to it. They have refused to come forward. We've asked, Mr. Speaker, the member from Halton, who stood in this legislature day after day after day Answer. and asked for cancellation of Oakville to come to the committee, and yet he's approved. Mr. Speaker, we have given the information to the committee. It's time. Thank you. Supplementary. Uh, Speaker, it's obvious they have not learned any lessons from all this. The, the Premier herself said we have 160,000 pages of documents. We've heard from 62 witnesses. Yet, with all of that, we still did not know the answer to the member from Cambridge's original question, how much did it cost? It took an auditor's report to tell us. Liberal witness after Liberal witness testified under oath, yet they all denied that TransCanada was told they would be made whole. Speaker, uh, twice today the Premier said, quote, we took advice from officials, but, but Speaker, we know that from the Auditor General that it was the Liberal government who told the OPA to locate the plant in Napanee. And that decision alone, that decision to move that plant so far away, the Auditor told us added $577 million to the question. Never mind that other issue. The Premier, despite your hollow apology, Ontarians want to know three things. Who's paying the money back? Who's getting Thank fired? You. And who's going to jail? Thank you. Thank you. I'm not impressed with uh, somebody's uh, actions. Governor Leader. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you can't rewrite history. The fact of the matter is that that party opposite made the exact same uh, the exact same promise as Mr. Speaker. Daniela Morowitz, who's the president of the Chartwell Maple Grove Residents Association, the Oakville area, went on Metro Morning, and you know what she spoke about in May of this year? She talked about going to Queens Park and the opposition parties being 100 percent behind behind her, and she went on to say nobody said how much is it going to cost or put a maximum dollar value on cancelling it. The member, the, the, member Mr. Speaker. the member from Nipissing will come to order. No. No, you won't. You will. Carry on. Every single party in this legislature made the same promise. Mr. Speaker, we came forward with the Auditor General. Member from Hamilton East Stony Creek, come to order. Member from Oxford, come to order. The Premier yesterday and the Minister of Energy outlined steps that they will take Member in order Hughes to make Bendel, sure this does order. not happen again. And Mr. Speaker, we yes, call on the Justice Committee to undertake similar work and provide advice to this government and future governments. Thank Mr. You. Speaker, you cannot rewrite history. No question. The member from Simmons, James Bay. My question is to the Premier. Premier, the report yesterday on the Oakville power plant from the auditor was quite damning. A section in the report, it says, the Premier's office committed to compensating TCE for the financial value of its contract for the Oakville plant, even though events occurred that we believe could have enabled termination costs at a much lower cost. My question is, why did the Liberal government commit to paying more money instead of paying less? 
Mr. Speaker, the, the the member for Prince Edward Hastings will come to order a second time. Carry on. Mr. Speaker, uh, the contract had a provision called force majeure, and basically there was a, ca it's a cancellation clause that would come into effect at some future time. The cancellation clause date uh, in the uh, agreement at hand, Mr. Speaker, uh, was uh, February 2016. Notwithstanding that, Mr. Speaker, the Auditor General calculated her her costs and expenses uh, based on a starting date of December 2015. So the auditor on one hand was saying this thing would be operational Order. in December 2015, and yet she's relying on a cancellation date in February 2016. So, Mr. Speaker, with respect to the Auditor General, there's a significant inconsistency yes, on that particular issue. And in addition, Mr. Speaker, they were negotiating. All the parties on our side Thank were you. negotiating in good faith. Thank you. Supplementary. Unbelievable that they're challenging the auditor on her decision. The fact is, your government had an opportunity in order to get out from underneath this at very little cost. For some reason, and we know what that is because you were trying to save some seats in Mississauga, you ended up doing what was the most expensive alternative. So I ask you again, why is it that you made a decision that committed Ontarians to paying far more than you should have for the cancellation of these plants? Mr. Manager. Mr. Speaker, uh, let's be very clear. Uh, three parties promised to cancel the gas plants, both of them, Mr. Speaker. None of us had estimates at the time. In the meantime, the Premier in her leadership asked the Auditor General to do a report. Notwithstanding the fact that the Auditor was taking nine months to prepare her report, the opposition continually tried to get the exact cost at committee. In April, Mr. Speaker, we asked the president of the OPA to come before committee with his most current estimate. That most current estimate was $350 million, or $310 million, Mr. Speaker. The reality is nobody knew what the cost was going to be. At that very committee hearing, I remember Answer. that the critic for the Conservatives was making an estimate of what the cost would be. Thank you. Thank you. New question, member from Thunder Bay, Atacopan. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Rural Affairs. The Minister, when we were first elected in 2003, we inherited three deficits, a financial deficit, a services deficit, and an infrastructure deficit. And in the first seven or eight years of government, we committed about $60 billion to infrastructure, including major projects in my riding of Thunder Bay, Atacopan. We further committed another $35 billion over the next three years. Now, small northern and rural uh, municipalities, including those in my riding, Nebing, Oliver Papoonge, O'Connor, Gillies, Conney and Atacocan have benefited greatly from our infrastructure announcements historically. My question to the Minister is if you can describe for me what your ministry and the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure has done to benefit those smaller municipalities through programs like MIII. Thank you. Minister of Rural Affairs. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I say good morning to the member of Thunder Bay, Atacoka, and I want to thank him for his question. Our budget in 2013, we put $100 million in for a new infrastructure program for small rural municipalities right across the great province of Ontario. My colleague, the Minister of Transportation, myself, had the opportunity to visit Ontario north, south, east, west over this past summer, an opportunity for us to consult widely with mayors and reeves and wardens, wonderful group of people, uh, to get their input on how we can allocate this $100 million to support roads and bridges in rural Ontario. I'm pleased to say that last Friday, the Premier and I had the opportunity to be in beautiful Sipco, Ontario. A wonderful mayor was there, Dennis Trevally of Sipco, saying this is the right program, the right time for rural Ontario. 21 communities across the province will be receiving funding. Under the program, we'll Thank you. Ahead, no, I, I stand up, you sit down. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker, and thanks to the Minister for that response. This summer, Minister Murray was in my riding. He held a consultation on the longer term infrastructure program, and he held that in Marillo, a small hamlet in a community in my riding of Oliver Papoonge. 
Now, small communities have benefited greatly, as I said in my opening question, on previous infrastructure announcements. However, they are still very concerned with stability and permanency. These small communities, by and large, have very large geographic land bases. They have relatively small tax bases with which to support their infrastructure needs. One bridge in a small community like Niebing or Oliver Papunj could significantly skew their budget. Minister, I'm asking you to tell me what we're doing on a go-forward basis to ensure that small northern and rural municipalities have some ability to Question. plan in a very positive, proactive way for their infrastructure needs on a go-forward basis. Well, thank you very much. I do get excited about investing in roads and bridges and water, wastewater treatment plants. Great stuff right across the province of Ontario. Mr. Speaker, and, uh, and to answer my colleague from Thunder Bay, Atacoka, Minister Murray and I travel across the province. We met with over 500 municipal leaders to talk about the challenges they face. And out of this consultation, Mr. Speaker, we're looking at ways 2014 that will be a centerpiece of our budget to have a further program. Member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound is warned. Carry on. In fact, Mr. Speaker, we're probably going to be doing some projects at the Ridings member, Bruce Gray, Owen Sound, to help that community out with their infrastructure needs. And, Mr. Speaker, we're looking forward to putting a permanent program in place. Hopefully, we'll see that. Hopefully, we'll see that in the 2014 budget because that's what AVO, that's what ROBA, that's what all the municipal leaders across Ontario are asking for, and we're going to deliver, Mr. Answer. Speaker. Question. The member from Barrie. Speaker, my question uh, today is to the Premier. Premier, yesterday I asked uh, why you were defending 200 per cent completion bonuses for the already grossly paid, overpaid TO 2015 executives. You continue to rationalize wasting $7 million for people to simply show up for work and said, and I quote, the compensation packages are based on the officials who hosted successful events like the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. That's perfect, Premier, and I'm going to hold you to that and insist that you follow suit because the government of BC actually cancelled millions in bonuses for its employees working on the Olympics. So, Premier, will you shut down these inappropriate taxpayer-funded bonuses? Of course not. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I, uh, I have said that uh, you know the the board negotiated these compensation packages. It's part of. It, if you look at comparators with other games, Mr. Speaker, they're consistent with those. But, Mr. Speaker, I just want to say this morning the minister and I had the opportunity to uh, to open and welcome the uh, the Paso AGM, Mr. Speaker. People from 41 countries who are here to be welcomed by Ontario and the the wonderful progress that we're making on the Pan Am Capital, Mr. Speaker, Pan Para Pan Capital, uh, the venues, Mr. Speaker. Uh, what is what is is confusing to me and in fact embarrassing, Mr. Speaker, is that the party opposite is not going to take part in the reception, Mr. Speaker, that they are not welcoming the uh, people from these 41 countries to Ontario. I hope, Mr. Speaker, that they will Answer. reconsider, that both parties will reconsider. They'll join us because I would like to say that the whole legislature welcomes the pan 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 folks. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary? I don't think I heard an answer. I didn't hear an Speaker, answer. Indeed, uh, they are all welcome, but not at any cost, Premier. Speaker, we're just at the tip of the iceberg with the Pan Am expensing, partying, and bonuses, and nobody is fixing it. No one. The Premier, the Finance Minister, the Minister of the Pan Am Games are all scapegoat the appointed TO 2015 buffer board when things go south. We see this with e how we saw it with Orange, when we saw it with the gas plants. You need to take accountability, Premier, and tonight you have the gall to celebrate the day after the, uh, the Auditor General report on Oakville some $1.1 billion in waste that could have actually financed these very games. Tonight's party will run another 500000 wow. The Minister of the Environment is warned. Carry on. Thank you, Speaker. Today's party will run another $500,000 for a good time, or up to $1,000 per guest. Wow. Speaker, wow. does the Premier have no shame? Question. Will the Premier release all the budgets and total costs for Pan Am partying? Thank you. Premier. Again, Mr. Speaker, I, I have said that the Minister has spoken to the board. We are reining in the expenses, Mr. Speaker. We're making it very clear that the, the judicious use of public dollars has to 
to be the norm at the Pan Am Games. But, Mr. Speaker, part of the condition of getting the Games was hosting this reception, was hosting the people from these 41 countries here in Ontario. The Pan Am Games, Mr. Speaker, for me, and I said this to the Paso AGM this morning, it's about all the young people in those 41 countries right now who are training, they're swimming, they're stretching, they're jumping, they're running. It's got to do with why we went into this bid, Mr. Speaker, why we wanted to bring the Pan Am Games here. And part of that is hosting the people who are involved in all the 41 countries, bringing them here and introducing them to Ontario. Good question. Leader of the third party. Thank you, Speaker. My question's for the Premier. Yesterday, we learned that no price is too high for Liberals when it comes to courting votes in Mississauga and Oakville. I wouldn't be surprised if the people in Thunder Bay are blowing a fuse today, Speaker. Can the Premier explain how her government can blow a billion dollars shuffling two power plants out of the Greater Toronto Area and not even have a penny left over to convert the Thunder Bay generating, uh, generating wow. station to gas? Mr. Energy. Mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, the plant in Oakville was poorly cited, and the government has accepted responsibility for that and the additional costs incurred, and the Premier has apologized for that. Mr. Speaker, all parties committed to cancelling these two gas plants, and we now have the price from the auditor. Mr. Speaker, what we're doing now moving forward is improving the siting of large energy projects. We've asked the ISO and the OPA to travel across the province and, and consult with people. They provided a report with 18 recommendations. Mr. Speaker, we've accepted those 18 recommendations. Those 18 recommend recommendations will ensure that there will be no siting errors, there will be no unwilling host communities for these large infrastructure projects. Mr. Speaker, that's what we've done. Mr. Speaker, yes, we contracted for 21 gas plants in the last 10 years, Thank you. and 19 of them. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, Speaker, the people in Thunder Bay have waited a long time for some straight answers about their gas plant conversion. By the way, the minister should know they actually want a gas plant conversion. Today, they're still waiting, even as Ontarians across the province are learning that they're on the hook for this government's billion-dollar scandal. Now, what's worse? is that for a billion dollars, this government could have easily converted the Thunder Bay generating station to gas and would have had plenty of money left over. Can the Premier please explain to the people of Thunder Bay why she threw billions of dollars or a billion dollars down a hole instead of providing power for mining and resource development projects across the Northwest? Minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader of the third party would ask a unique question. I would give a unique answer. Mr. Speaker, she's asked that question before. I've indicated we haven't made a decision on converting the Thunder Bay gas plant. It's still under consideration, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we will be meeting. We've got, ta we've got meetings scheduled with the task force Talks from Thunder down. Bay. We're continuing to talk to them. We have our advice from our, our uh, ministerial agencies, Mr. Speaker, and uh, the decision will be made soon in due course. Due course. And uh, I expect Thunder Bay and Northwestern Ontario will be happy with the outcome. Oh. She's barking up the wrong tree, Mr. Speaker. Always barking. No question. A member from Scarborough, Gilwood. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of the Environment, and it affects all people in all Ontario. Protecting the quality of the air we breathe is a fundamental concern for all Ontarians. When I was the CEO of Civic Action, reducing the number of cars on our roads was one of our objectives in hopes of cutting down the amount of airborne pollutants. Pollutants that cause smog, for example, contribute to respiratory and other health problems for tens of thousands of individuals every year. Lately, I have been pleased by the conversations with longtime residents from my riding of Scarborough Guildwood, where they expressed the noticeable improvements to their air quality over the past few years relative to years prior. Speaker, through you, would the Minister of the Environment Question? please share with us the extent to which smog in Ontario has been handled over the last decade? Minister of the Environment. An excellent question on uh, 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 great public interest, and I want to thank the member for it. Our government, she would know, has taken very strong action on smog uh, pollution in Ontario. 
and the results really have been good. I have some statistics here to share with members of the House. Oh, that's good, do. good. Do. The average number of smog advisory days per year has been decreasing since 2003. There were 17 or more smog advisory days each year between 2003 and 2008. Since 2009, Ontario has had three years with fewer than 10 smog advisory days. This year has been nearly uh, smog day free so far. These observed reductions in annual smog can be largely attributed to a 36 per cent reduction over the last several years in nitrogen yes, dioxide, wow. one of the major ingredients of smog, as well as a 33 per cent reduction in fine particulate matter, one of the health damaging components of smog. Thank you. Good. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Again, my question is for the Minister of Environment. Residents throughout Ontario will be pleased that our government has been working hard and successfully to reduce smog causing pollutants. It will be reassuring to the residents of Scarborough Guildwood that the improved air quality they have noticed over the past few years is the product of amiable action by our government. Speaker, through you, could the Minister of the Environment please share with this House more specifically how our government is reducing the air pollutants that lead to smog and other setbacks in our air quality? Thank you, Minister. Uh, again, an excellent question, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as members would know, uh, smog contributes to nearly 10,000 premature deaths exactly. a year in our wow. province, That's according right. to the Ontario Medical Association. They know. And I'm pleased to be able to mention a number of initiatives it's that are improving air quality in Ontario. A massive investment in public transit exactly. is obvious to all in this province. Our government's phase out of coal-fired generating stations is nearly complete, despite encouragement Despite encouragement from the benches of the official opposition to burn more health damaging coal. As well, over the objection of our Conservative friends, we have strengthened the Drive Clean program. Cars, trucks, and vans are the biggest domestic source of smog in Ontario. Answer. So it matters that car generated air pollution is reduced by a third to drive clean required car repairs. And the Ontario Medical Association, Thank you. the doctors, the asthma association. Thank you. New question. The member from Newmarket Aurora. Thank you, My question is to the Minister of Health. Speaker, the gas plant scandal cost the taxpayers of this province more than a billion dollars. The Orange Air Ambulance scandal cost taxpayers untold millions. But more important, it cost the lives of patients. And when the full truth is known, we'll find that the ineptitude and mismanagement under the watch of this government also cost the lives of four dedicated first responders. Wow. We're now told that Orange is conducting a strategic review of its operations. Speaker, if there was one consistent theme through 18 months of hearings into the Orange Air Ambulance scandal, it was this. Orange should not be in the aviation business. Can the minister tell us if that advice that came from staff, from pilots, from paramedics, and from stakeholders is that recommendation part of the review? Thank you. Minister of Health and Long Term Care. Well, Speaker, I, I must start by saying I find it um, disappointing that the uh, member opposite would. Uh, uh, prejudge the investigation that is underway yeah. uh, with regards to the yeah. crash in, uh, in the speaker. But I can tell you that uh, Orange is very committed to patient safety and to the safety of the men and women who work at Orange. They are also very committed to ensuring that they uh, deliver the best possible value for the money that they spend. I am enormously impressed with the new leadership at Orange. They are looking very closely at uh, important questions, Speaker. They are engaging their own staff. They are engaging people from uh, uh, outside of the Orange organization who have a lot yes, to sir. offer, Speaker. They are dedicated to improving the quality of care, Speaker, and the value for money at Orange. Thank you. So the minister doesn't know if that is part of the strategic uh, review, and we're going to assume that it's not. Speaker, there are two Transport Canada inspection reports that were issued in March of this year. 
Both of those reports validate the testimony of witnesses that testify to the fact that Orange should not be in the aviation business. From aircraft equipment to pilot and paramedic training to the sustainability of the current structure, it is very clear that Orange should not be in the aviation business. I'd like to know from the minister, would the minister tell us, us this? Why is she and Orange so intent on perpetuating the MASA scheme that will continue to put the lives of patients she and first responders at risk in this province? Why will she not take the advice of sworn testimony that makes it very clear Thank you. that Orange should not be in this business? Minister of Health. Thank you, Minister. Uh, speaker, what I can tell you is that uh, the new leadership at Orange has, uh, uh, has brought an entirely different approach to providing air ambulance. They are working with other partners, Speaker, in our health care system. They're working with Critical. They're working with our, uh, uh, our hospitals. They're working with Land Ambulance, Speaker. They are really working to integrate Orange into our health care system in a way that it has never happened before. As I said earlier, I am very impressed with the uh, work of Dr. Andrew McCallum. I'm very impressed with the work of the new board speaker. They are determined to make the right decisions for the people of this province, and I do wish the member opposite would support them in their work and support the frontline men and women who come to work every Answer. day to save lives, Speaker. Thank you. My question is for the Minister uh, responsible of Francophone Affairs. I've heard, I've had a few calls from SOS Durham, but the government keeps putting obstacles in their way. When they want to be re-elected, the government showed that they can act very fast, just like the Auditor General has shown in, in her report on both power plants. But when it's about helping francophones to help being designated, it's taking way too long. The question is very simple. Why do we face so many delays? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to thank the member of Nicole Belt for her question. I'm very surprised to hear her comments today, her interest in the region of Durham. We are working with this region, we've been working with them for a very long time, and the delays are not caused by us. We are supporting them. We would like them to be a designated region right now. We want the consent of the opposition members and there are is hesitation, so I've uh, met with the members representing this uh, constituency and there's still uh, a resistance in the opposition. So I would like um, to keep on working with them. We're thanking people for their determination to seek being a designated region. So I encourage working with us and trying to convince the members that are representing this uh, region. Question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Durham region meets the uh, criteria to be a designated region, but we keep asking more. We, they always need more uh, support le letters, and they are not supporting them t in, uh, their, uh, s in, in their search for more services. So when is the government going to work for Francophone communities, and when are they going to work with the region so that they can become a designated region according to the French Services Act? Answer? For the designation, there are criteria that have been established from the start, and the Durham region does not meet these criteria. With Kingston, there was a goodwill from the elected people in this region, and it's been very easy with their approval to designate Kingston region. We do not have the same support right now from the members in the, this region, so I encourage them to keep working with the Municipal Council and the Regional Council to make sure that we can designate this reg region. So I encourage my colleague from Nickel Belt to help in this process. Thank you.
the Minister of Rural Affairs on a point of order. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I didn't get this in time earlier this morning, but Dr. Rita Kalisian from Peterborough, Dennis. She's with the ODA Lobby Day here in Peterborough. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Speaker. The member from uh, Prince Edward Hastings. A point of order, Mr. Speaker. I would also like to welcome some constituents from Belleville. Ralph and Diana Neal are here. And Kate Neal, who's been the spokesperson for Bill 30, and I'd like to congratulate her on her hard work is here as well. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I too would like to uh, to welcome the Neal family, include, including Trish Neal, Kate's aunt. You, we've heard, we've heard a lot about Kate as we've debated this bill, and I'm delighted you're with us today, Kate. I'd also like to welcome uh, Joanne Donardo and Florentina Sansu Soiree from the Canadian Cancer Society, and Annette Sear from the Melanoma Network thank of you. Canada. Thank you. We have a deferred vote on the motion of third reading of. I've been seeing it, so I'll see it. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Earlier today, in response to a question from a uh, from a Liberal member, the Minister of Health indicated that there would be legislation coming forward later. You know that it is the custom of this House that for the announcement of legislation is to take place in this legislature, not in the form of answering a law ball question from one of her backbench MPPs. Um, a point of order, and uh, for, for, clar for clarity purposes, you can anticipate and say anything you want in terms of legislation. There is no rule that says they have to do it in a certain manner. So whatever it, that, that kind of guesstimation is is very doable. The, uh, we have a deferred vote in the motion of the third reading of Bill 30, an act to regulate the selling and marketing of tanning services and ultraviolet light treatments for tanning. Call in the members. This will be a five-minute bill.
The members take their seats, please. All members take their seats, please. Thank you. On October 8, Ms. Matthews moved re uh, third reading of Bill 30. All those in favor, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. 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 Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Garretson. Mr. Garretson. Mr. Jeffries. Mrs. Jeffries. Mr. Jeffries. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Madame Mayor. Madame Mayor. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Ho Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Bartolucci. Mr. Bartolucci. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mrs. Cansfield. Mrs. Cansfield. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Duguid. Mr. Duguid. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Ms. Peruzza. Ms. Peruzza. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Mr. McNeely. Mr. McNeely. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Nackvi. Mr. Nackvi. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Balkasin. Mr. Balkasin. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Jassic. Ms. Jassic. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Domerlock. Ms. Domerlock. Mr. Kraft. Mr. Kraft. Ms. Mangat. Ms. Mangat. Mrs. Elliott. Mrs. Elliott. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Arno. Mr. Arno. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Hudak. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry San Muskoka. Mr. Cleese. Mr. Cleese. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. Holiday. Mr. Holiday. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sherman. Mr. Europe. Mr. Europe. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ms. McKenna. Ms. McKenna. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Milligan. Mr. Milligan. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. Madame Jelena. Madame Jelena. Mr. Besson. Mr. Besson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Genovo. Mr. Genovo. Mr. Marchese. Mr. Marchese. Mr. Prue. Mr. Prue. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Forster. Ms. Forster. Ms. Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Mr. Vanta. Mr. Van Hoff. Mr. Shine. Mr. Shine. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. All those opposed, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. The ayes are 95 and the nays are 0. The ayes being 95 and the nays being 0, I declare the bill carried. Third reading of the bill, troisième lecture de Claude Gilles Be it resolved that the bill do now pass and be entitled as in the motion. A deferred vote on the motion of second reading of Bill 6, an act to protect and restore the Great Lakes St. Lawrence River Basin. Calling the members, this will be a five minutes bell. On February 27, 2013, Mr. Bradley moves second reading of Bill 6. All those in favour, please rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. 
Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Malloy. Mr. Malloy. Mr. Garrison. Mr. Garrison. Mr. Garrison. Mr. Jeffrey. Mrs. Jeffrey. Mr. Souza. Mr. Souza. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Madame Mayer. Madame Mayer. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Bartolucci. Mr. Bartolucci. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Bardinetti. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mrs. Cansfield. Mrs. Cansfield. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Duga. Mr. Duga. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. McMeekin. Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan. Mr. Peruzza. Mr. Peruzza. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Leal. Mr. Leal. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Flynn. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Mr. McNeely. Mr. McNeely. Mr. Padre. Mr. Padre. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Moridi. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Orzetti. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Nackby. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Balkasin. Mr. Balkasin. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Jassa. Ms. Jassa. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Domerla. Mr. Crack. Mr. Crack. Ms. Manga. Ms. Manga. Mr. Shine. Mr. Shine. Mr. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Genovo. Ms. Genovo. Mr. Marchese. Mr. Marchese. Madame Jolinat. Madame Jolinat. Mr. Prue. Mr. Prue. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Natasha. Mr. Tavins. Mr. Tavins. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Forster. Ms. Forster. Ms. Campbell. Ms. Campbell. Mr. Vantal. Mr. Vantal. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mrs. Elliott. Mrs. Elliott. Mr. Huda. Mr. Huda. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. Yakabuski. Mr. McLeod. Mr. McLeod. Mr. Miller, Perry, Sound, Muskoka. Mr. Miller, Perry, Sound, Muskoka. Mr. Cleese. Mr. Cleese. Mr. Barrett. Mr. Barrett. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. McNaughton. Mr. Holliday. Mr. Holliday. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Mrs. Monroe. Mrs. Monroe. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Chudley. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. O'Toole. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Mr. Sherman. Mr. Sherman. Mr. Yurek. Mr. Yurek. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mrs. McKenna. Mrs. McKenna. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipies. Mr. Pettipies. Mr. Milligan. Mr. Milligan. Mr. McLaren. Mr. McLaren. Mr. Nichols. Mr. Nichols. The ayes being 62 and the nays being 33, I declare the motion carried. Second reading of the bill, busy and lecture, close you to watch. Shall the bill be ordered for third reading, Minister of the Environment? I would ask that the bill be referred to the Standing Committee on Regulations and Private Bills. So ordered. There is a uh, reception for the historic Brantford Red Sox in room 340 presently to be received. There are no deferred votes further. This House stands adjourned until 3 p.m. this afternoon.